Welcome everyone. I am Dr. Saurabh Jindal. Today we will speak about something quite important called as insulin resistance. And why everybody should know and care about insulin resistance. It's the central theme binding so many diseases which we will see today as well. And we will then speak about how intermittent fasting will work very effectively to reduce this insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is a phenomenon which is linked to so many diseases of modern humankind. It's linked to diabetes. Most diabetics, especially the type 2 diabetic people have insulin resistance. Polycystic ovary disease, such a common problem in females nowadays which dysregulates their hormones. They don't have normal periods. They have a lot of infertility because of that. Heart disease is linked very strongly with insulin resistance. Kidney disease, strokes, fatty liver, liver deposit in the in, in uh, liver having a lot of fatty deposits. It's very common for people to have fat deposits in the liver which leads them to liver failure. In fact, we think now it's more important than even alcohol in creating liver damage. Obesity is linked very strongly to insulin resistance. In fact, if you reduce insulin resistance, you will become thinner and prevent so many other diseases. Alzheimer's dementia, which is such a common problem of brain damage as you grow older, Hypertension, increased blood pressure, even some cancers are linked to insulin resistance and obesity. Something as common as acne is also being linked to this. Let's understand a little bit about insulin. Now, insulin is an injection which diabetics take to reduce their glucose level. So think of insulin as a glucose reducing hormone which your pancreas produces normally internally but diabetics have to take many times from outside. There are two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 diabetics basically don't have any formation of insulin in their body. So they are dependent on external source of insulin throughout their whole life. In this lecture, we are not focusing on type 1. We are focusing more on the commoner type 2 diabetes, which we see so commonly around us. Type 2 diabetes is different from type 1 because they have in fact more insulin than normal. So if they have more insulin, their sugar should be low because insulin reduces sugar levels but in, their sugar is in fact high. How does that get explained? When your insulin is high, insulin should be working, but in diabetes, what is the problem? Even though there is high insulin, insulin does not work because of something called as insulin resistance. We'll see that in the lecture gradually. First, let's understand why these people have high insulin. Now, let's look at the definition of a poison. Poison is a substance that can cause illness or death of a living organism when it is taken. We think of alcohol, cocaine, heroin, smoking as poisons. Now you have to understand sugar and carbohydrates are equal poisons, especially the refined carbohydrates. The problem is we have limited alcohol. We don't give alcohol to kids. We don't ask them to smoke. But realize this. Are we not guilty in giving sugar? to our kids, to give chocolates to our kids, to give refined carbohydrates like cornflakes to our kids, that is an equal poison. The problem is we have not realized that with this love of giving them sugar and carbohydrates, we are giving them a poison to take and it will make them ill. Why is carbohydrates and sugar so bad? Basically, when you take them, your insulin levels in the body go up and insulin is a fat depositing hormone as well. So you will see children also now becoming more and more obese. Childhood obesity has really ballooned. Same thing with adults because we're having a lot of carbohydrate and sugar filled meals. What happens now when you have carbohydrates, for example, example have you have white bread or you have white rice. You might think not think of it as sweet, but when it gets metabolized in your body, it does become glucose in the first place. So medically, just pure sugar or even refined carbohydrates mean the same thing. Both are basically glucose in the body. Your body will have to release a lot of insulin from the pancreas to neutralize this glucose. How does insulin reduce glucose for a normal person? Glucose has to enter the cell for energy production, but the cell is closed. It doesn't allow glucose to go in. What does insulin do? Think of insulin as a key. It opens the lock of the cell, so to speak, it opens a door and the glucose now can rush in through the door and that is how the cell is getting its share of energy glucose to produce energy and this is how the glucose is reducing in the bloodstream with insulin production. But problem is we keep on eating too much. 
so every two hours every three hours we are eating some kind of a snack or a meal and most of our meals are refined carbohydrates or a sugar based meal now what happens is you have lot of secretion of insulin so all these keys that you can see all of them are pancreatic secreted insulins because there's so much sugar now see these yellow stars all of them depict glucose out in the blood and this amount of insulin all these doors are getting opened up all the doors are open and now the sugar enters the cell in a large amount so even though there's a lot of stress in your system now a lot of insulin is getting produced still your sugar levels are getting controlled because the sugar is entering the cell because of the key so you will find as the black arrow shows that the insulin levels have shot up but your sugar level is still fine and if you measure a sugar level right now patient would say that my sugar is fine i'm healthy but that's not true their insulin is already so high they're already unhealthy but they don't know about it this high insulin also does one thing i told you it's a fat depositing hormone so it will deposit fat in your entire body and you will see that usually by an increasing belly so your belly fat abdominal fat is increasing it's a very common experience for people in the middle age to see their abdominal girth increasing and you should know that's not a benign thing it's a very dangerous thing it's a sign of poor health it's a sign of a lot of fat deposit in the body and this fat is basically getting deposited only because your insulin was very high and that was high because you had a lot of carbohydrates lot of sugar rich meal so if you want to reduce your belly fat there's nothing more than for you to reduce the carbohydrate and the sugar intake and you'll find that your obesity in fact will reduce just with that now see what happens when you have so much insulin now surrounding the cell what happens next i'll give you an example let's say you take a sleeping tablet on the first day because you're not getting sleep it will work very well but if you keep on taking the same sleeping tablet again and again and again you'll find very soon the sleeping tablet stops to work and why would that be because of something which is called as resistance your body has become habituated to the sleeping tablet it's not working anymore same way when you have so much insulin getting secreted in the body insulin is working in the beginning but after a few years insulin stops to work the key doesn't work it doesn't open the door of the cell this is insulin resistance this insulin resistance is the central theme i told you already in so many diseases so do you realize insulin resistance is happening because there's so much of insulin secretion otherwise it would never have happened so the key is not working so if you want to prevent heart disease kidney disease strokes heart disease blood pressure alzheimer's dementia obesity everything can just be addressed by reducing your insulin resistance and how would that happen if you have a low carbohydrate and a sugar meal that has to be very less what is the clinical sign you can judge for yourself if you're, if you're insulin resistant or no first of all i told you your abdominal girth would increase one more sign would be your neck the folds of your neck will start becoming a bit black your axilla your armpit skin will start becoming a bit black you will start having a bit of these outpouching of soft growths from your neck which are called as skin tags or acrocorde even on the face you can see this black areas on the sides of your face people come to us saying that doctor i'm getting this cosmetic problem of blackness of the face that is just insulin resistance now what happens because of insulin resistance now when you have a carbohydrate rich meal or a sugar rich meal now the key is just not there the key is not working insulin cannot push the glucose into the cell in fact now all the glucose will be outside and you have a high blood sugar now ultimately so the start of high blood sugars is happened after so many years of insulin resistance see this the black arrow shot up the sh sugar was okay in the beginning and later on after many years the sugar has shot up this is then type 2 diabetes so now from this very simple illustration you have understood why the sugar problem is coming for so many people just with high insulin and insulin resistance what is the solution for all of this do intermittent fasting it's a magical at home method to reduce everything that i have just told you it reduces insulin resistance prevents so many diseases which are called as non communicable diseases like diabetes and hypertension and cancers and obesity and even a cholesterol problem for example lipid problems now what is intermittent fasting you can see my other videos on intermittent fasting on my youtube channel here i'll just summarize what it is the details you will see in the other videos 
Intermittent fasting divides your day into two periods, feeding window and fasting window. Typically the feeding window is lesser than the fasting window. Means you feed for a few number of hours and you fast for more number of hours. For example, you can fast for 16 hours and you can feed for 8 hours. So only for those 8 hours when you are eating, only at that time your insulin is spiking up. But for 16 hours your insulin is very very low. So if you see in the whole day then the balance of insulin is towards the lower side because most of the time you are fasting your insulin would reduce that's called intermittent fasting. So if you fast your glucose level will obviously go down you because you're not eating too much and when you have no food glucose coming in there's no need for the body to secrete that insulin so insulin obviously would go down. So if you had a carb rich meal your insulin goes up if you if you do fasting your insulin basically goes back down. So now you see this insulin has gone back down and this is a good thing because if your insulin has gone back down see what happens. It's almost taking the example of the sleeping pill tablet again. If you stop, if you reduce your sleeping pill intake, you stop taking the sleeping pills for many days and then maybe after a month or so when you want to take it again, maybe for a day or so, it will start working again and you would find that it's work again, worked again. What has happened? Basically, you have reduced your resistance to the effect of that sleeping tablet and why did that happen? Because your body stopped becoming used to it because you stopped giving it that sleeping tablet. So basically the way to reduce resistance is to reduce the amount of that particular product. So that's why if you reduce your blood insulins, then your insulin resistance goes down and your insulin starts to work better. So see what happens when insulin gone back down, the body fat would start to loosen up. That's the first benefit you would get. So body fat has started to go down and your obesity would go down. As I said in the example of the glucose working better, the insulin working better, so the key is working that much better. When the key is working better, now when you take a sugar filled meal or a glucose rich diet, then all the sugar is entering into the cell now because your key started to work again so insulin resistance has gone down your key is starting to work again so now the carbohydrates can easily go into the cell and obviously your sugar goes back down when your sugar goes back down then you obviously the diabetes problem has reduced so would you now realize that just the way to reduce your sugar would be to reduce the insulin resistance and allow the insulin to work better and so all the glucose getting pushed into the cell you have low blood sugars and that helps your diabetes. So it's a very important thing just medications don't help diabetes you have to change your lifestyle change your diet. Diet has a very important role in managing blood sugars. In fact the role of diet and diabetes can easily be illustrated by this bariatric surgery example all many people know about bariatric surgery as a surgery which reduces body fat and very very fat people can start having a drastic weight loss after surgery what is bariatric surgery they staple the uh, stomach they make a bypass and they reduce the cavity of the stomach so you can't eat too much and then you lose a lot of weight so just reduction of diet is helping them lose weight but is it only a cosmetic thing no it's a very common experience that bariatric surgery reverses diabetes i'm not even saying here reduction of diabetes i'm saying reversal it will make you a non-diabetic person how big is that surgery can cure diabetes for so many people and then what happens almost all your studies on bariatric surgery have told us that see this bariatric procedures are followed by normalization of plasma glucose in about 80 to 100 percent of morbidly obese patients so almost 80 to 100 percent people will have normalization of their sugar levels just with the bypass other studies also meta-analysis showing complete resolution of type 2 diabetes in almost 78 percent of cases so most people become non-diabetic just with having a, a reduction of their dietary status when they eat lesser they lose weight and their diabetes reverses the anti-diabetic effect of bariatric surgery is in fact very long lasting so it's not just for a few days you'll have you'll have a good effect for a very long time so why not have this exact same benefit with just intermittent fasting why not fast for a long amount of hours in a day and eating for a less amount of time it doesn't give you any nutritional imbalance it's a very good thing intermittent fasting is now considered the medical equivalent 
of bariatric surgery. So why to go for surgery which has got so many side effects as well? It, is it not easy to do that? So definitely for people who are having a BMI of 30, 35, they really need to get into intermittent fasting. They will be able to avoid this bariatric surgery and they'll get equal anti-diabetic effects. In fact, we say that people who are in the pre-diabetic situation, they in fact, they, it prevents them from going into diabetes. So intermittent fasting is that good. And if they're early diabetics, in fact, they can have reversal and they can stop their medication at one point of time and definitely a, a good shot to give for intermittent fasting. This is Dr. Saurabh Jindal signing off. This is my way to change the world one kilo at a time. If you like the videos, give me a thumbs up, share this. You can see my other videos on intermittent fasting. I've personally done intermittent fasting and have can vouch for the benefits of this particular technique. Please do this at your own uh, house and it is so easy to do and really gives you a lot of healthy benefits. Thank you very much.